Hello, hello, hello. This is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X elsewhere, and it's time to return to Sherlock Holmes' Secret of the Silver Earring. Now, we have... I have to check three books on the shelves. Let's see. Mm, yes. Let's see here. So we have to get one. Oh, I must have got the right one. Alright, let's see what we got here. Ballistic science. Oh, well, we got a book on ballistic science. Add 15 centimeters to the height of the powder marks to arrive at the approximation of the shooter's stature. Accurate to within one or two centimeters. Oh. Here is information which could be really helpful in our investigation. Okay. Oh, and I grabbed an art book. Study of tobacco. Ah, maps with tobacco, calming effect of the herb and tobacco made by the uh, Shipkakwe Company. And it's found only in Brazil. These Churapaki cigarettes come from Brazil, and they seem to contain narcotic substances. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, is there anything else? Let's see. Ah, one more item. Book about footprints. Mass Bay and the noise of examination of the footprints left upon the ground. This is possible even should their stride be unremarkable. The stride is often shortened when an individual is moving with great caution to avoid detection, either prior to or immediately after they have the, having committed a crime. This hypothesis corresponds to almost every case. There are some ex exceptions. False conclusions are possible when the person who left the footprints comes from a region of the world where the morphology in regards to the feet is unusual, considering the Chinese tradition imposed upon females born of noble families. They are compelled by such traditions to have their feet bound and squeezed from a tender age till the day of their wedding. Hmm. I need to analyze the evidence found at Sherringford Hall. A piece of white cloth, a small box, various powders, and finally the hair. Let's get to work. Okay. I need to analyze the evidence found at Sherringford Hall. A piece of white cloth, yes. a small box, various powders, and finally the hair. Let's get to work. Okay. To analyze the nature of stains, I must first soak the cloth in a solution of soap and water. Okay. Well, I got water. Uh, I need soap. Acid spirit, spirit, no. Acid, no. So, okay. Oh, we'll put that on there, and then we'll take the soap. And click that on the bottom. All righty. All right. Lift that. To, to analyze the nature of this now, now, I should place this off on the Okay. Let's see. Let's see.
Wait, wait, wait. Alright. Now I add solvent. Now I shall place this stain this liquid, but not very oily. Hmm. Okay. Let's examine it under the microscope. Yes. A very fine white cotton. Very fine white cotton. be the reaction if I heated this powder. Okay. Burnt gunpowder. Mm. Powder found in the corridor to the kitchen is no doubt gunpowder. Interesting. Alright. Let's take a look at the black hair. Let's examine it under the microscope. Yes. A man's hair. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Ah, on the corridor to the kitchen, black hair found on the furniture is oily, maybe due to the use of brillantine. Hair of a man. Okay. box with white powder. A box containing some white powder? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Let's examine it under the microscope. Let's examine it under the microscope. Let's examine Let's examine it. These powders are similar. I can see it from the grains. Ah! So they're all the same. Okay. What would be the reaction if I heated this powder? Let's see. It has no effect. Let's mix some water with this powder, a glue or pasty substance, like starch. Starch? Eh? Let's see. Powders found here matches the powders found in the ladies' room and in the small box under the end table. Rice powder, very pulverant, resembling 
from the far gunpowder, but not offensive at all, could, it could have been used due to the quantity to conceal the presence of the gunpowder. Mm. That's curious. All right, we got Let's examine right it under the microscope. A light feminine perfume. It seems to me that we have gathered all of the key elements, Watson. However, before we retire, let's summarize our findings. The questions should be answered yes or no, and justified by the evidence or testimony received during the investigation. Ah. Okay. All right. Do we have an idea of the weapon used for the crime? Yes. Sherlock. Yes. Second time we spoke with Colonel Maz. Could the murderers escape through the stairs going to the second floor? No. The ashes found in the smoking room are from English cigarettes. No. So where is that? In front of service door. Ah, so we do have that cigarette butt. Ah. Study of tobacco. All right. Side door going to the to kitchen open after the shot. No. Lambert choose tablecloth did Miss Lambert choose tablecloths and arrange tables? Well that's an obvious no. Miss mm -hmm. Lambert
Okay. Do we have an idea of the murderer's height? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Ah, yes. And, uh... Ballistic science. Among the interrogated people, did any other th others than Colonel Patterson have bad eyesight? Okay. Miss Lambert's dialogue and her guest list. Okay. It is simplicity itself, Watson. We have answered all the questions. Yes. And now we're off to day two. 5th of October, 1897. Mm. My dear Lestrade, I congratulate you on the precise quality of your notes. It is true that you have missed everything of importance, but you have spared me the trouble of eliminating the trifles and pointed me in the right direction. Ah, I hear familiar steps on the stairs. Please be seated, Watson. You must be famished. Lestrade was kind enough to bring a copy of his notes, hoping it would be of assistance in this affair. Indeed. You can study them now and enjoy your meal. Please take your time, Watson, because bad digestion weakens our ability to reason. Holmes, you will get no argument from me as this dish is delicious. We will go to Sheringford Hall with Lestrade when you're finished with your meal. I'll ah. read the documents Holmes gave me. All right. All right, so let's see. Ah. Okay, let's start with the crime. All right, report on the investigation at Sherrington Hall, Inspector Charge Lestrade. Before 11 o'clock in the evening, Sir Melvin Bombsby, engineer, architect, and contractor for known, was slain by a single gunshot in his mansion, Sherrington Hall. The crime, the author of which is still undetermined, it took place in the ballroom during the reception arranged by the victim in honor of his daughter's return to England. She spent uh, years at finishing school on the continent. Despite the presence of 100 witnesses, no precise testimony was obtained regarding the exact circumstances of this horrific act. Nevertheless, based upon certain evidences, there is a presumption of suspicion towards the daughter of the victim, Miss Libba Lavinia Romsby. Mm -hmm. Instrument of the crime, the bullet extracted from the corpse of the victim corresponds to the caliber of the revolver found in Miss Lavinia Bromsby's purse. This purse found on the floor was near the door from which Miss Lavinia Bromsby first appeared after the mortal, mortal shot was fired. All the witnesses agree that the sound of the shot originated at or near this very same doorway. The revolver is an old small bore, right, which is also a highly reliable weapon. Alright. Difficult angle. Why the shot was mortal. Fire was mortal. Miss Lavinia claims that the victim personally gave her this revolver before the crime for the purpose of her protection against an unnamed threat. This account can be supported by the fact that these miles are impossible to find on the continent where Miss Lavinia had spent these last years. Free to tr Premeditation can be excluded if she is found to be the murderer. Mm. Okay, motive. The victim, even if he had few or even no friends, still might not have enemies capable of committing this act. And his strong unpopularity among his domestics was compensated by the attractive wages he paid them. His business partner spoke high spoke of him as a tough but fair player, according to the criterions of this environment. The fact that he spent long years in India and 
and was solely devoted to his business and precludes any crime of jealousy or passion. Finally, the modus operandi doesn't correspond to the typical revenge killing by this or that Hindu sect, though, though these things do happen. Might have been something quite personal and a line of reasoning that's Miss Bronx. Partner Sir Bromsby, her relationship with the prior had become so strained that Sir Bromsby visited his daughter only once during these past six years. A local constable must contact Mr. H. Fowlett, the attorney of Sir Bromsby, in order to recover the essential parts of his last will and testament if it exists. Found another crime. This is shooting. It's reasonable to suppose that only an expert marksman could have succeeded in making such a shot. But the factor of probability still exists and admits other possibilities. Testimony of the The thick bars and the fortuitous presence of the maid at the stairwell indicates that no one ascended to that floor. The testimony of Miss Lambert, the governess, indicates that she only noticed two people absent from the run. Okay. Mr. Fowler and Ms. Bromsby. was delayed till today. Scotland Yard report. General information about the man called Sir Melvin Bromby. No official involvement as defendant in any criminal civil matters. No appearance as a witness in a criminal or civil law case. Complainant as to a robbery committed at a fair stand in St. Arlefamu on July 1861. Judgment of the court was favorable for the Crown. Melvin Bromsby, dear Sherlock, Melvin Bromsby. Salinger Company, so he soon sent to India to assist. Hmm. This enjoys great success, however, the fact that he has been awarded nearly all of the Army's civilian contracts has aroused the jealousy and suspicion of the other British businessmen in India. Hmm. So there is more to this than meets the eye. Ah, I came from Mycroft. All this is very interesting. According to the evidence, it seems that the shooter was not in the ballroom or the corridor. Where was he then? Are you finished, Watson? Shall we go? Let us return to Sheringford Hall. Yes, let's let's return to Sherrington Hall. Hmm. Cabby. Cabby. Oh, Miss Lambert stares, hovering in the air. Okay, looks right now. Sirs, please, go right in. Right. Please wait here, gentlemen. I will see if Miss Lavinia is receiving callers. She's in her room. Okay, and here's Mr. Uh, Mr. Granby. Dr. Grimble. Well, Mr. Grimble, I didn't expect to see you here at this hour. I am worried about Miss Lavinia, needless to say. I also thought I might learn something of interest about the investigation. This difficulty, if it persists, can do great harm to the business. Hmm. Sir Bromsby and Miss Lavinia had rather strained relations, it seems. Well, Sir Bromsby and Miss Lavinia have never got on very well. Of late, their distance had grown due to the influence of several Incidents. Incidents? What sort of incidents, precisely? I do remember one instance in India, where Sir Bromsby attacked a friend of Miss Lavinia. He was our native Cartman's son. Oh. It seems he spilled a jug full of water that was intended for Sir Bromsby to wash his face. Bromsby began cursing and thrashing the boy before his daughter's very eyes. Miss Lavinia took her friend's part and spoke to her father most rudely. The devil, you say? What occurred mm. next? Yes. There is no one in the whole of India who would have dared address Sir Bromsby in such a manner. 
He stayed closeted in his office for the entire day. The next day, he fired the carter. But despite these incidents, I am still sure that Miss Lavinia sincerely loved mm. her father. Interesting. I'm sorry, but I have to go. All right, as you wish. I shall remain here. Okay. Let's I have see. to leave you, sirs. I need to verify certain things. Yes. There's something more going on. I can sense it. The more we consider the facts of this affair, the more mysterious it becomes. The important thing is to be precise and rigorous in your analysis. But at Scotland Yard, we know this well. Reminds me a bit of bad business I resolved. I believe it involved a theft of sticks from a polo team. I have myself engaged in this sport but a few years ago. Really? Do you enjoy the sport of polo, Mr. Grimble? Uh, oh, uh, no. You cannot imagine the benefits of this sport. To achieve perfect form and union, man with horse. Oh. A little like the waltz, eh? Exactly. Except that with this sport, mounting is at full speed, which complicates things singularly. I don't follow you. The team from Brixton, in my opinion, is the finest example of how polo should be played. Perhaps they may well be. But what would you say about that last match of the Old Ghost Rangers? <laughs> they were absolutely splendid. But what of the Brixton team? Weren't they the cause of some ruckus about a matter of corruption? Well, uh, I believe they're, uh, Let's see, is this the kitchen here? Ah, yes. Good, good, good. Uh, may I come in? Well, well... Oh! Take that! Ah! Pardon me. It is already quite dead, you know. Oh, you frighten me! I, I have a case of the nerves, uh, you understand. I cannot find my bottles. Your bottles? On the table. No, not those! That is a poor vintage. The two bottles that the old crap... Uh, God rest his soul, uh, ordered up from London for the party. Both were 18-year-old whiskey, perfect for the digestion and the heart's sorrows. Oh. And who could have taken them? I'm sure yes. the barman from Hartford stumbled them. Who else would know to take those particular bottles over the others? Hmm, interesting. Very good. Uh, I will leave you to your chicken, then. That's it. To whom does this belong? Hmm. All right. Now well, let's check the ladies' powder room. Really tell how early this game was made. Hello. A handbag of Lavinia Bronsby. I do not favor ransacking a lady's personal property, but I think she will be understanding. Yeah, I would be understanding too, and let's hope we can do this. So let's uh, unpack it. Oh. 
a programme for the London Opera. Oh, Arrington's letter. Oh. Let's see. Dear Miss Lavinia, excuse my boldness, and do believe in my most sincere condolences and honourable affections in this horrible time. I cannot excuse myself if I allow you to face all of this on your own. I ordered my valet to move my possessions to the Queen's Arm, which is the nearest inn to Sherrington Hall. I would be greatly <clears throat> if I could allow if it would allow me to make myself useful to you. At my new lodgings, I am but a few minutes away, should you require my assistance. I took care to forget my gloves at your mansion, so that my visit to call on you would not invite any undue speculation or gossip. Well, now I know who the white gloves belong to. And at this point, we're going to uh, save the game, and uh, we will continue this adventure the next time round. As always, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X Elsewhere, inviting you to subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other playthroughs I've done. I have played through the, all the, at the time of recording, all the prior games released that are chronologically before this. Uh, that includes uh, Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper, Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, and Sherlock Holmes Nemesis, or Sherlock Holmes vs. Versus Arsene Lupin. I plan to, once Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 comes out, if it hasn't come out by the time this, this video goes up, I plan to get that one and play it as well. Now I'm also working my way through other games. I am working my way through Alien vs. Predator, the 2010 release, currently on the Alien campaign. I am also working my way through the Henry Stickman collection, uh, working my way through The Witness, a very nice, calm, and quiet game. I am working my way through uh, the Zork franchise in a chronological order, so I'm tackling Zork Zero first. I am working my way through Gibbous, a Cthulhu adventure. Very fun game, and it has a snarky cat on it. in it. I am also working my way through the Monkey Island franchise. In fact, I am on Tales of Monkey Island, the last game in that franchise. And I think I'm coming close to ending the second chapter of that game. I am working my way also uh, through Call of Cthulhu. Having just finished not too long ago, Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. And there are other things you may want to check out on the channel. And if you've watched this again, thank you. Uh, please give the video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with what might be coming out. Have a good one all, and goodbye.